It's no real surprise that Nintendo takes inspiration from Japan and applies it to a lot of their video games. But what about Animal Crossing? You know, as a kid, I never paid too much attention to like the cultural significance of Japan in games like Animal Crossing and how so many things that are featured in Animal Crossing are predominantly derived directly from things that are kind of exclusive to Japan culture for the most part. So what if we went to Japan and we tried to figure out everything Animal Crossing related or inspired that we might have missed or not have noticed or at the very least thought was kind of cool. My wife and I have never been to Asia and as huge Nintendo and Animal Crossing fans we thought this would be a great opportunity to try to do everything Animal Crossing related that we possibly can do during our trip. We've seen some interesting videos of other content creators doing stuff like this for Pokemon but where's the Animal Crossing love? Well let's give it a go. So after our long flight to Japan we stayed at this one hotel that was really nice but we we're really tired so we didn't really do anything for the first day we were there. We did find an Outback stay house, which is unrelated to anything Animal Crossing, but the real journey to try to find the Animal Crossing inspiration sources in Japan was when we traveled by train to Kyoto City, where we managed to rent this really interesting traditional Japanese styled house. And all right, now we're talking. Look at those floors. Those are floors that are in Animal Crossing. They're tatami mats. They're made of bamboo and they're supposed to be like soft on your feet or whatever. And yeah, you can craft these in Animal Crossing New Horizons with bamboo and in houses and stuff that have this like traditional Japanese designed to them. Typically, you roll out futon mats, you sleep on the floor, and then when you're done sleeping, you put the futon mats up. This actually explains to me way back in my childhood days when I wondered why in Pokemon there's only like one bed in the whole house that your character lived in despite having like a parent. Now the headcanon makes sense. They just like rolled up a futon in like a closet or something and roll it out when they go to sleep, but then they wake up before you so you never see it. There's also a couple of other things that I've seen as like furniture items in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which obviously, I mean, if you are familiar with Japanese culture, then you would have probably made that connection way sooner than someone like me who was kind of ignorant to like the cultural significance of Japan and Animal Crossing until recently for some reason. But yeah, we have these low tables, these low chairs, because we typically sit on the floor here. And the next day, we went to the Fushimi Inari Shrine, which was just like five to ten minutes away. And look at this, power lines, just like the power lines I scattered across my Animal Crossing town. Now, one interesting thing that I want to also note here is that when I started playing Animal Crossing New Horizons and like really got into it, I had this goal to make my town this really awesome city futuristic aesthetic and slowly that evolved and the more and more I started like trying to make it look more city-like and futuristic the more I was finding inspiration by looking at other people's towns that were like Japan and Tokyo inspired it makes sense because Tokyo and Japan as a whole is like this hybrid of like old traditional Japan and like new cutting-edge technology so the things like tight alleyways or little streets that you could walk down was something that I really took inspiration from in my Animal Crossing town specifically specifically. So getting to like walk down a street like this and seeing things like power lines made me excited or like a vending machine or something like that. Just because I was like, yes, this was the aesthetic I'd been going for and I was inspired by and now I'm getting to actually experience it firsthand. I'm starting to realize how much of a nerdy video topic this is, but I really, really wanted to talk about it. Okay, now this shrine is really cool in just an overall Japanese context. Now this shrine, which is dedicated to the fox gods, is famous for its Tori gates, which is definitely an item you may have seen in Animal Crossing as well. But besides like, like the really cool sanctuary and architecture that's here in this really like serene environment. This place is famous for the Tory gates that go all the way up this mountain and around and back down. Actually, interesting little side note, but this shrine served as the inspiration for Star Fox. Essentially, when they were trying to develop the idea behind this space game that they were working on, trying to figure out how to like portray the idea of 3D environments, like an object moving through space. The idea of these gates here at the shrine were a part of the overall thought process as you progress through each gate walking up, this became a design philosophy involved in the Star Fox development. I think there was probably also some inspiration by the fact that this is obviously a shrine dedicated to Fox gods, and then the game that they're working on, which drew inspiration from the shrine, ends up being Star Fox. Okay, side tangent over, let's move on. Also, the gift shops have uh, the little cats with the hand thing that you can have in Animal Crossing that are also, you know, commonly known in Asian cultures. These are known as beckoning cats, and they're supposed to bring good luck to the owner. Now, unfortunately, we didn't take the hike all the way up to the top of the summit here because it takes like two to three hours and we had other things to do like take a train to Nara and feed some deer at a park. They bow at you. It's pretty incredible. But yeah, overall, this day was pretty cool. Also at that deer park in Nara, I saw this wall over here and it reminded me of the walls that I have in my Animal Crossing town. So I felt like really achieved just spotting that. Oh yeah, also earlier in the day, I saw these lanterns, which also are in Animal Crossing. There's a ton of other things that have taken inspiration 
inspiration from the Inari Shrine, like Kiriko from Overwatch, like her whole existence and the Tori Gates and everything, straight from this place. Kind of neat. Not really Animal Crossing related, but okay. Now, I know there was a lot I was going to probably end up seeing when we would go to Tokyo, but while we were on this side of Japan, we did look around a bit more. Like over in Osaka, there was these busy streets, which I felt like this was a really cool uh, little marketplace area that kind of reminded me of parts that I had managed to put into my island. It was like I was seeing my inspiration firsthand, finally, after all this time. Bikes being everywhere was a big thing across all of Japan, which did make me feel pretty vindicated because in my Animal Crossing Island, I literally have bikes everywhere. I could tell that even my Uber Eats driver rides his bike around quite a bit. We would end up leaving this area of Japan though, though I did get a bento that had these strings that you could pull and it would like heat up the food without you having to like microwave it or put it in the oven or anything. What is this technology? How do we not have this in America? I'm very upset about this to this day. Over in Tokyo, the first thing that I noticed straight from something I've seen in Animal Crossing is the emergency exit lights in Japan. They're also in Animal Crossing. They're mostly the same. Now, while we were in Tokyo, we did make a little side quest stop to the Pokemon store located in the Sunshine Mall. There wasn't really too much Animal Crossing here, but I did see a J-pop group perform here. <laughs> So that was interesting. The biggest day by far though was when we were in Tokyo and we made our way to Shibuya because the Animal Crossing experience there, if you're an Animal Crossing fan, is definitely top tier, something you don't want to miss out on. Now, of course, Shibuya is famous for its crossing and like this huge area where you can like shop and there's a ton of places. It's also the place directly found in Persona 5, so I was pretty excited about that. I'm getting distracted here. If you go to this building nearby and you travel up a couple of the floors, it's like this narrow mall, boom, there's a Nintendo store and there's a Pokemon store. There also was a Digimon store over there too, kind of in the corner, which I thought was funny. Now, the Nintendo store itself was absolutely incredible. Not only for all the Nintendo stuff, but the Animal Crossing selection years later after Animal Crossing New Horizon released is so strong. Stronger than I actually expected because after Animal Crossing New Horizons kind of died down, I felt like it became a second class citizen in Nintendo. Not here. Oh no. Look at all of the Animal Crossing things. And I literally made it a point to film as much as I could without feeling super awkward while in this store in regards to the Animal Crossing stuff because I wanted to make this video and tax right off my trip. I didn't say that. Let's keep going. Honestly, at first I thought maybe there'd be like a little thing with some like stuffed plushes of Animal Crossing characters, which there were plushes of Animal Crossing characters, quite a few, but there were statues, plates, there was different types of things that you could just buy for friends or clothes that are Animal Crossing inspired. You know, for the longest time, my friends always would make fun of me for playing computer games without a mouse pad. Bam, those days are over. I ended up buying two Animal Crossing mouse pads while I was there. My wife got this Animal Crossing outfit. They had mugs. They had like Brewster stuff for the roost. Dodo Airlines, getaway packages. And you know what? One thing as an Animal Crossing fan, as frustrating as it had been with like no new updates and New Horizons for quite a long time and feeling this way about Animal Crossing that Nintendo just forgets about it, it was really reassuring going to this specific Nintendo store in Shibuya. With the exception of Pokemon, which is always kind of treated as its own things separately, it seems like. This store made it very clear that the big Nintendo franchises at this time that are mostly supported are easily Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Splatoon, and Animal Crossing. And that's kind of how the store was divided with a little section to Pikmin, which makes sense because Pikmin just, you know, had a new game not that long ago in the whole mobile game. But yeah, I was very, very impressed with the Animal Crossing selection, whether it's things like plates and placemats and other little keychains and whatnot, to the new Lego collection that recently released being on display play, having its own little end cap dedicated to it. There was a lot of clothing options, notebook options, water bottle options, slippers. There were a lot of things for like lunch boxes or like class lunch or school lunch or something that maybe if there was like a kid who was a fan of Animal Crossing, this would be really cool for. A lot of kitchenware, surprisingly. There were mugs, handbags, all sorts of things, and a nice display that just like had Animal Crossing on there, which kind of had some unique art to it. I think it was more inspired by some of the older Animal Crossing things, but obviously, you know, it is aware of like New Horizons and stuff. I really like that part. I mean, they even had like this little Animal Crossing sandwich press. Honestly, if I didn't have to like travel back with everything on a plane, I probably would have spent a whole lot more money than I did. And we spent quite a bit of money at this Nintendo store already. But hey, it was definitely worth it, I think. This was easily one of the highlights. Now with the Nintendo store done and behind us, there still was a lot to see in Japan just to find other inspirations or other things that showed up in Animal Crossing, like this ice cream stand, which is definitely an ice cream light that you can get in Animal Crossing, but it's very common to see in Japan and surprisingly, I saw multiple of these in different ice cream locations. Just a way to get people's attention that they have ice cream there, I dig it. And while yes, there are vending machines literally on every corner, there's not as many vending machines 
that we've noticed that had like food in them and that's because 7-Eleven of course is literally around every corner or if it's not 7-Eleven there's a family mart and these are some of the most incredible things that I've ever seen in my entire life. Now you see typically if you live in the United States and you go to a 7-Eleven it's like a 50-50 chance if it's going to be like an okay store or not. Like half of them you might feel like you need to get a tetanus shot after you've been in there and then the other half maybe you can get some like good food or a slurpee or something. Japan is a completely different experience when it comes to these convenience stores. These are some of the nicest stores I've ever seen. There's a nice selection, there's pleasant music playing inside of them, and the food you can buy, surprisingly fresh and good tasting. Now, not only in my Animal Crossing Island did I already have a 7-Eleven set up there, it's like I knew somehow that 7-Eleven would just click one time in my life, and it makes sense now. But my original idea for putting a 7-Eleven in my Animal Crossing town was heavily inspired by the 7-Eleven crossover events that Animal Crossing used to do back in the New Leaf days. Back in New Leaf, there was like an entire 7-Eleven set that you could get and you could pretty much create a 7-Eleven store of your own in a house if you wanted to because I mean, look at all of this. This is really cool. They even had a character dedicated to 7-Eleven. Why did Animal Crossing randomly have so much love for a 7-Eleven? Now, I actually understand this because they're not these like stores that you're kind of scared to go in at night, but these are like top-notch fans see convenience stores. I don't know. It was really cool. It had more of like a vibe of a Walgreens than, you know, like a scary gas station. Also, it was interesting, none of the 7-Elevens or Family Marts were gas stations. Like, these are all just standalone corner stores. With whatever neighborhood you're in, there's a 7-Eleven or Family Mart within walking distance. I was completely surprised by this. This is gonna prove a point later on in the video. Just wait and you'll see. There were a lot of other little nuanced things that we discovered along the way. Like, for instance, when we were preparing to go to Japan, we fell in love with watching a lot of videos of people who explore Japan, travel Japan, live in Japan, things like that. And surprisingly, like, van life living isn't that crazy. There's this channel that we watch that we're gonna link in the description, and they live in Japan, and they travel around in a van, and it's really cool. And that kind of resonates to what Animal Crossing used to do back in New Leaf and into Pocket Camp with the whole, like, RV thing. Like, it just didn't come out of nowhere. It was probably inspired by, like, a culture of people that actually live this way and explore the countrysides of Japan and the nature and cool locations it has and just because of the way that Japan is so accessible where there's convenience stores everywhere there's bathhouses laundromats like for some people it's a very doable thing and it seems really interesting I think that they kind of inspired this whole concept of van living and applied it to two Animal Crossing games in the form of New Leaf and even more so in Animal Crossing Pocket Camp some other interesting things that we saw were that there's parks literally everywhere despite times when we were in Tokyo a really busy city there would just be like a big park and that was really cool they like really do a good job at capturing nature while being like within this massive city section and also surprisingly enough there's not a whole lot of trash cans that you'll see in Japan that kind of surprised me I thought like a big city like Tokyo there'd be a trash can around every corner that's what I had in my Animal Crossing game I just thought that's the way things would be but no there's like occasionally a recycling area but for the most part people just keep the trash with them until they get home and then dispose of things on their own you don't just like find a trash can at like every storefront. A couple of other interesting things, we went to this cool robot cafe that serves you your food and drinks without having to talk to someone, which is really great for socially awkward people and people who don't speak the language. And it just, uh, you order with a tablet and it just rolls out whatever you got right here. And I was also very surprised that one of the most popular drinks in Japan is Green Fanta. I couldn't figure out what the flavor was until later, but it's melon flavor apparently. But man, this stuff really does taste good. Of course, one of my favorite parts of Japan by far are the streets and alleyways that kind of make up so much of of various city and urban locations in Japan. Like just little alleys that look like this. It's just, I don't know what it is about it. I just really love the way they look. And then you tie that with like a neon glow. And I think that's probably why in my Animal Crossing town, I have so many of those like wear open signs and just other types of lights all over the place. If it lights up, I really like to have it. I think that's why I went after like the palm tree lights and stuff like that. Just because I like the neon glow right on top of a city setting. And I just felt like this is kind of a perfect encapsulation of this. And I think that maybe subconsciously I was really inspired by big cities like Tokyo when I was making my Animal Crossing town into a city. Like when I was first starting my town, I was thinking, you know, cyberpunk or something like that. And I really never made the connection with how much a city like Night City from cyberpunk is obviously very heavily inspired by Tokyo, for example. And I feel really dumb for not making the connection way earlier, but I'm really glad that I'm now able to appreciate it and at least have had that realization in the last year or so. 
Also, when you're in Japan, you might find a bunch of these tanuki statues in front of a ton of different storefronts. This is like based in Japanese folklore. The tanuki represents wealth and whatnot, so they're very commonly associated with storefronts. And I think that that's maybe why Tom Nook is a tanuki and why they decided to like go that route. It's actually really clever. But also another interesting thing is that this tanuki that looks creepy in real life also exists in Animal Crossing. They creep me out. They can murder you in your sleep. I don't know. I found that the arcade cabinets are three variants in Animal Crossing itself. I found that some arcades in Japan, these machines look very similar. Like this is the standard style of arcade machine. There were some other furniture pieces that I just kind of noticed along the way, like Cypress baths are very common. We see them here in Animal Crossing, but they can be found in a ton of like resorts, hotels and whatnot. And while I didn't get to see this one personally on my trip, there is of course like the giant monster Godzilla thing that you can get in Animal Crossing. There's a hotel that has Godzilla on it. Also the big Big fighting mech is kind of maybe inspired by the big Gundams that they do have in a couple of different locations in Japan, which are really cool too. There of course is the big cherry blossom selection of items found in Animal Crossing. These are of course associated with the cherry blossom season in Japan that really only runs for a couple of weeks. Now our trip, we were just short of the cherry blossom season, but we did see a couple of cherry blossoms, which are really cool. But of course in Animal Crossing, there is like a week period of time where cherry blossoms will just be in your Animal Crossing island in March or April, and you can get a bunch of exclusive cherry blossom related things like cherry blossom lanterns and whatnot. This is like a really big deal in Japan, which I was surprised. Like, they do cherry blossom McDonald's tie-ins. Like, it's a seasonal event, almost like a holiday that lasts a week long, and it is a really, really big deal, which was pretty cool. Also, an interesting side note, I always thought that this truck in Animal Crossing looked way shorter for like a delivery truck than what we have here in the US, but honestly, in Japan, I saw a lot of different trucks that looked like this that were just like these short narrow delivery trucks it makes sense a lot of the roads are really narrow so having a truck that can optimize space and be narrow at the same time is kind of a good idea also in like the update to animal crossing new horizons when they did the whole happy home paradise stuff that added a bunch of stuff to catalogs they added in the scooters which i feel like are top tier accurate for japan in general so many people ride scooters and that's actually really interesting i'm kind of terrified of riding a scooter so i wouldn't personally but hey for everyone else good on them now ultimately at the end of the day i think this trip made me think a lot about Animal Crossing and Japanese cultural influences on the game itself, and it made me really excited for the next Animal Crossing game. I know there's rumors of leaks that, you know, you can never really actually trust, saying there's gonna be a new game in like two years or something like that. I don't know if I believe it, but man, there is so much potential of inspiration that can be drawn from the city parts of Japan, I think, that could really play a new role in Animal Crossing in making the games bigger and better than ever before. While New Horizons did a really great great job just mastering the whole stranded island getaway resort thing. That was awesome. I'd love to see them maybe take an approach of doing this hybrid of mixing old traditional Japan with new contemporary urban Japan. I've talked about this before in this channel, how I'd love to see like a city building Animal Crossing game, but I think that there's a lot of opportunities to do even more than just that. Give us a space where we can build different things, but maybe set up a central hub world that's like a city, kind of like what Splatoon has before you go into matchmaking, but something where you can meet and see other players and interact with them, maybe play games. It'd be really cool if there was like an online city in Animal Crossing you could travel to that had other things like new shops and clothing stores and stuff, maybe even DLC accessible through the city that's detached from your main town or island that has the main things you would expect from an Animal Crossing game. And I think with the addition of Happy Home Paradise letting us decorate all these different types of buildings on a central island, if they implemented that into a new game where we could decorate the different buildings on our island ourselves or our town ourselves. There's just so much creativity that could be done, especially with the items that Animal Crossing already has in its catalog. So many things only would really look good inside a grocery store, for example. But if they let us actually build a grocery store on our island, I think that would be something really neat. I'm really optimistic that the future Animal Crossing game will take on like a bigger city approach or let us build our town up to a bigger city. Or hey, if you didn't want to do that, and you want to have like an old castle town or a cozy town or whatever people have, you should be able to do that too. But I think taking inspiration from Tokyo and other big cities in Japan and then apply them to the options of how you can customize your game or have a central hub world that everyone can go and visit, which I think would be so cool, it leaves me at least somewhat optimistic. I really think it's all that weird. I'm still surprised how controversial this thing ended up being, but uh, Raymond made 
outfit or maid cafe would oddly enough be kind of fitting for Japanese inspiration here. I still think though, some of the coolest things that we saw in Japan were interior locations and for most of Animal Crossing's lifetime, interior decorating has been one of the biggest parts of the game. But now with Animal Crossing New Horizons, things have kind of journeyed outside of just the indoor section, which means when you have someone come visit your island, a lot of the times they're just running through your island to see how you've decorated the outside. Not too much energy is put into looking indoors. I really hope that in the next game, they can kind of reinvigorate the need or want to show someone the indoor sections of your island, because a lot of us put a lot of work into our houses too, and I think that that's also something worth checking out. So, you know, maybe they'll take inspiration from a lot of the settings that are available in some of these urban locations to kind of bring some new ideas to Animal Crossing. I'm not really trying to turn this video though into a wish list for the next Animal Crossing game, but I'm sorry, I just can't help it. Sometimes we get going and we can't stop. Another thing I found very interesting were the claw machines, which are actually in quite a bit of places. You go and uh, try to get the thing or whatever with the claw machine, and there's all types of things you can get out of a claw machine, but uh, they're really, really hard to actually win, or at least I felt like that. I spent a little bit too much yen trying to get something anything at any point. Also, phone booths! Surprisingly still a thing in Japan, unlike here. In Animal Crossing, I have uh, phone booths around, so I feel vindicated. But uh, for fun, this, this is um, so bad. This sounds really, really nerdy. I actually enjoy trying to keep track of all the locations in my county that still have phone booths. Um, like, I know there's like seven or so in a 30 mile radius of where I live. I don't have any idea if they still work, but to me they're just this odd relic of the past, of a time that's long gone. But in Japan, they're way more utilized and still around, actually kind of modernized to an extent. I saw so many phone booths and it was different, it was cool. Another little thing you might notice is there's a lot of air conditioning units and uh, window air conditioning units, which low key in some weird out there way seems to contribute to Japan's like urban atmosphere and one of the things that we like about it so much. And yeah, you know, a few years earlier when Animal Crossing New Horizons first released, I think there was even more widespread Animal Crossing merch out there that you could get at various locations. There's still some for sure, but Besides like the Nintendo store, it wasn't like as commonplace as Pokemon. A few years ago, it probably was a little bit different. Like even if you look at Google Maps to try to like look for a store like the Nintendo store, which wasn't added to like the walking maps yet. They hadn't constructed it by the time that they had added it into Google Maps. We can see some other shops though on the same floor that aren't there anymore that did sell Animal Crossing things before like Nintendo came and was like a huge section of this building. But still, it was pretty cool to get to see Animal Crossing stuff, especially the stuff that we did get to see out there. We had gone to the Nintendo store in New York a couple of years earlier, and that was still after Animal Crossing New Horizons released, and there were a couple of things you could pick up, but the Japanese experience was definitely far superior. And of course, the biggest part I think was just being able to appreciate the inspirations that are taken just from everyday life in Japan that are put into Animal Crossing. They're things you don't really think about that uh, just kind of make up the decorations that you put on your island to this day. And that's more so a bigger case for all games that come from Nintendo or all games that come out of Japan. It's such a unique modern and traditional culture blended together that so many aesthetics are just drawn from all the amazing visuals that are over there. And I think that as gamers, even in the West, we can realize how cool that is. I'm not trying to like send some special message out there. I'm just saying I had a really good time exploring this and doing this type of video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing or liking this video for more Nintendo content or Animal Crossing content. Maybe 100 Days of Animal Crossing New Leaf will finally come out soon, hopefully. But I really appreciate all of the support on this channel, and we're going to just continue to kind of just see where it goes. So a subscription goes a long way, especially if you're watching on TV. Also, hit the like button tells the algorithm you want to see more content like this, so that's cool too. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time with something else. Bye.